Nowadays, the challenge for conservation is protecting wildlife in our own backyards, not just relying on national parks and reserves. Here at the Cape Sanctuary in the Hawke's Bay, local landowners are working hard to get over 2,500 hectares of our natural environment back to full health. The Cape Sanctuary is special for a number of reasons. And the first is that it's a private initiative. The second thing is, is the habitats within it. The third thing is size. But the best thing I think about it all is that it remains a productive landscape. It's going to be farmed as it always has been. And I think it's going to really show that great conservation gains are possible within production landscapes. This fence is not mouse-proof. To reduce the cost of building the fence, because less wire is now needed because the aperture size has gone up. And we live with mice because we've got the fence ends terminating on the coast where the tide goes in and the tide goes out. And at times there are exposed beaches that animals can walk around. But we have accepted from day one that this place is always going to leak, more so than most. And so we trap. This is a little penguin box that um, we made a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it's one of about 150 that we have scattered around the coast. And has he got a resident? Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's molting. Eh? Yeah, he is. And we're trying to restore the seabird communities along this coast so that along these coastal faces here, we end up with literally thousands of seabirds coming in every year. Well, this beach is a really special place for breeding seabirds and particularly variable oyster catcher and New Zealand dottrell. And in the first year of the predator control operation, we had two pairs and one of them bred successfully. And the second year, the year we're just in now, we've had seven pairs bred on this beach. So far, we've reintroduced four common forest birds, which are locally common in Hawke's Bay, but have been absent from here for a few years. And they've included things like Wolf Island Robin. And they're doing really well. We've now had an unbanded feeding and unbanded, which means we're into the second generations of breeding. We reintroduced tomtit and rifleman uh, early last year, and whitehead also. Last year, we released 30 pataki. And that was a pretty exciting time for us, yeah. They've probably not been here for the last hundred years. We released the first kiwi in August to this last year, and we're up to kiwi number 12 now. But we're aiming to get a sort of core population of 60 in, and then hopefully they'll all um, just can get on with it themselves after that. Well, these are rifleman boxes, and these have been put in to increase the um, nesting habitat for riflemen. But we've discovered that instead of riflemen using them, we've actually got them full of weta. It's kind of one of those nice little surprises that you get when you take things like rats out of a system. Although the Cape Sanctuary is a private project, it shows us that with the right resources, drive and determination, big conservation gains can still be made. And by working together with local volunteers, rangers and visiting scientists, this sanctuary can help bring the local wildlife back to its former glory.